Hi everyone, welcome in. It's another edition of uh, Leak Chronicles with your host, Buckrabbit. Today we're going to do some mining. I mean like proper mining. So I've done a bit of changes to the Cobra. So let's have a look at the build now. So I've swapped a couple of the hard points for mining lasers. Left the beam lasers on. They're really just for a bit of defence, nothing at all. Uh, we've left the chaff launchers on board. They're just to so we can escape. And the core internals are all the same. Still got the 4D power plant, the 4D thrusters, the 4A frame shift, the 3D life support, the 3D power distro, the 3D sensors. Everything else is left as standard. But the real changes are in optional. So we've still got the 4E shield generator, basically because we can't afford a new one yet. So that's standard. Upgraded the cargo rack to a 4E for 16 tons. Swapped out one of the three cargo racks for a 3A collect Olympic controller. We've got a 2A refinery with six bins and we've got two 2E cargo racks to get us a bit more cargo. We've got a very important thing we've got here is a detailed surface scanner and a prospect Olympic controller. We're only going to be doing surface mining. We're not doing core mining, not yet. So now we've got that. We can plot a course to our favourite mining site in the in the galaxy, which is Baran. You may have noticed I've got significantly more in the way of bookmarks. That's because we're now a member of a squadron. It's my squadron. It's called Terrorhawks. And we've joined up and now we get the benefit of all of those bookmarks. So we're going to pot a course over to Baran. It's two jumps. Two jumps. So let's get over there. So we've actually had to remove the auto dock, auto land. So we're going to have to do this manually. So we just aim for the slot, and away we go. Stay on the side of the greens, so we don't hit something on the way in or the way out. I know that we said we were going to unlock an engineer, but I thought. Well, we might as well get some decent stuff to actually get engineered. So, we need, for that, we need money. So, money is some, just a couple of jumps over to Baran. So we've got no fuel scoop, so we do not need to wait for any type of fuel scooping. But the planet we're heading to is Baran A2 in the Baran system. So one more jump. You may have noticed that I've now got a surface scanner in my primary fire group and that's what we're going to use to find the diamonds. So we're going to head over to that unexplored. We could scan everything in here and we probably will. We'll just do a think 
quick dupe. Quick honk. We already know it, where it is due to the squadron bookmark, so we just literally need to go over there and uh, scan that particular planet. And you may notice that planets will actually get scanned as we progress. So you can either do it through the full spectrum scanner or you can do it just by flying next to them. So there we go, we're discovering all sorts right now. So Baran A2 is where we're going. It's a gas giant, water-based life. And that actually has rings on it. So we're going to slow down as we approach. Because what we need to do is scan the ring. See at the moment it's a bit potluck where you're going to jump in. So let's give it a bit of a wide berth so we can... Uh, actually let's go this other side. Let's go the light side. So we can get face onto the ring. So there you see, there is the ring. Now as we get closer the surface scanner will say out of range and we need to be in range. As soon as it's in range, it will say something like too fast. You can see it's quite a big planet. I'll probably do us. There we go. Right, let's throttle back to zero. Do not exit Super Cruise. You cannot use this outside of Super Cruise. So let me just press the fire button and we're going to scan the ring. So, literally, you just fire a probe into the ring. There's a number of people here, and that's the result you get. Now this does actually have two rings, so let's see if we can get that second ring. So you've got an inner and an outer ring. There we go. Now all these orange spots are hot spots of a particular element. You can see they've got bromelite, Low temperature diamonds, bromelite, bromelite, low temperature diamonds. Now, at the moment, at the time of recording, Baran A2 has a triple low temperature diamond hotspot. So what we've got here is three hotspots very close together. Yeah? Now what we need to do is aim for the middle one. And we just drop straight in. You'll see all these little uh, chatter happening on the comms. That's all NPCs. Unless you see one of your squadron friends or someone you know. Or a different commander entirely. If you're playing open, you know, might get the opportunity to do that. So we're just going to drop straight into here. Literally, you just got to crash into it. Makes no difference. I usually try to drop about 100 kilometers away from the actual hotspot. So then we can make our way towards it. So you keep it targeted. And we come in. crash <laughs> it shouldn't cause too much damage okay we're about 30 kilometers away which is good and you will see other ships that are in here they're usually NPCs sometimes they're pirates sometimes they're other miners sometimes they're police if it's a pirate they will usually come up and scan you this looks like a pirate So just let them scan you. And you can scan him in return. Usually what will happen is they will say, have you got anything? And 
you'll say, no, I haven't got anything. And I realise now that I've forgotten my limpets. Which isn't a massive problem. Because we should be able to synthesise some. So we're going to synthesise a few. So you go to inventory. Down to synthesis. Find limpets. And I don't have enough. I do not have enough iron and nickel to synthesise nickel. Hmm, that's going to be a problem. Never mind. Tell you what we're going to do. We need... This happens to everyone. So what we're going to do... We're going to go to a local station. Which is called... Brothers, I can find it. Any one of these terminals should sell them. So let's go to Garay Works. So there you go. Can happen to anyone. Let's get out of mass lock. And these things happen, you know. You forget your limpets, and if you forget your limpets, you gotta go and get some limpets. If you can't synthesize them, you'll need to go and buy some. So that's why we're going to go over here to Garay Works. Where hopefully they sell them. That's one of the good, <laughs> great things in Elite. Is you don't know if, these play, if this place is going to sell what you need. You just need to go there and see what happens, really. But I'll tell you what I could do, is we could go into FSS and find that planet with the settlement on it. I think it's on a hub. No, that's asteroids. Right, so it will be in this one somewhere. It should be a moon quite close by. What I should have done was gone to the no. Well this has been great. <laughs> Let's go to Garrow Works. I don't think they sell limpets, but we'll see. Otherwise we'll have to go to the nav beacon and get some. Find out where the other place is and get some. Oh, there's brothers. All right, let's go there. I didn't think that had been detected, but it has. Oh, it's very close. Excellent. So now you're going to see a planetary landing. We're going way too fast. So let's dip. See if we can slow us down a bit. Spin around and let's get into position to do a planetary landing. Now, when it goes dash like that, that means that it's actually out of sight, so it's around the other side. So we need to swing out. Now we can see it. So we line up on the point, get it underneath us. Ideally, we want between 60 and 30 degrees to get a good burn. Don't worry about the conflict zones. If you don't actually drop out in them, they shouldn't bother you. Sometimes you forget how good the music is in Elite Dangerous. 
I usually play with sort of cyberpunk when I'm playing and streaming. So you forget what it's like, but I think it, you know, for the purposes of these episodes, yeah, I'll stick with the music it gets provided. So we've got a good approach here coming in. Nice and steady. We're a bit shallow. So let's just skip along a little bit. Skip along the atmosphere a little bit. Well, lit what little atmosphere there is, because there's no atmospheric landings in Elite. This is a good installation. It's right next door to Baran A2. It's a good place to park up after a mining expedition. It's a good place to leave equipment. If you've only got one ship and you want to swap out fuel scoops and Guardian frame shift boosters, things like that. And it will drop into orbital cruise. Oh no, we'll drop out of orbital cruise. Get into a glide. And that's when we're just going to glide towards the installation. And so long as you keep it in your sights. The glide will actually cut before you hit it. There we go. It's basically trust the glide, trust the glide, trust the glide. So let's just boost over towards it and request docking like you would from a space station. And just like a station, you wait wait until you're seven and a half kilometers away before requesting docking. One thing you do have to bear in mind when you're landing on surface insulation is the gravity. Now, if you can actually see the gravity, it's on the display underneath your height indicator. It's 0 0.15 G. We're in range. Let's request docking. If you don't keep an eye on that, if you don't keep an eye on your gravity, there may come a time where you crash your ship into the surface of a moon because of gravity. And gravity is a bitch. Scan that Cobra. Now, sometimes these are actually the wrong way around. So you want the numbers facing away from you on the edge of the pad. And that's how we do it. So we're just going to hover over the pad, get into position. Thrust left. Drop our landing gear. Just aim towards it. And just level out and drop thrust down until we get the indicator. Now we're way off. And we just want to play, put the hole in the basket. And that's how we do it. here we go so we'll go to services might as well fuel up while we're here now the limpets are available from advanced maintenance restock 
and we want basically 80% limpets roughly so now we can go back up to A2 and launch now manual launch is easy it will actually let you go so you just thrust up landing gear up and away we go just thrust away from the station from the surface until the mass lock disappears now we can engage super cruise and you just head for the escape vector full thrust we go back to A2. Obviously we could have avoided all of that had we bought limpets at the station we began at. But, you know, it happens. Don't dip down too quickly. That uh, red line means you're still within the gravitational pull of the moon. Or planet. Depending on where you are. And if you get that noise, it means that you've got a chance of dropping back in. So you really want to keep well away from it until you've got altitude. And you know, my altitude is about 100 kilometers now. And as we fall away from it, as we thrust away from it, that pink ring should disappear. There you go. And it's gone. You're still in the atmosphere we call it atmosphere but it's not really but now we're thrusting away quite happily we're going to head back to that triple hotspot if you remember in one of my previous videos I said that mining was a waste of time now it's not because you have the equipment to do it properly which is a detailed surface scanner, prospect limpets, and collect limpets. Because that's what you need to do it effectively. At the moment, there's not much that can touch this in my in number of credits you can earn in an hour. And I'm hoping that this little run will get me enough money to upgrade my ship. I'm going to stick with the Cobra for just for now. But I just want some upgrades on it. You know, better power plant, better distro, better everything really. Okay, we need to find that triple hotspot again. I think it's that blob there. At the 6 o'clock, sort of 6 o'clock position. There's a little one right next to next door, but don't go there. Of course, this might all change in June when they release the carriers, because all hotspots are being rejigged, so they've been reallocated. The RNG on it is being redone. Okay, we want the middle one. That one. Because where they all overlap, that's the highest concentration of low temps. So we're just going to jump straight in here and see what we can find. Can give up, give Lola a few upgrades. And here we go. Drop straight in on that hot spot. There 
We're 130 kilometers away, but it really doesn't matter at the moment. So we're going to change to our mining configuration, which is collectors, mining lasers, and prospectors. We've got a few ships over there behind us. There's a good chance one of them's a pirate. Let's just see. Just check what they are. No. It's like a wing. It is a wing of three, and they're all bad guys. Yeah, go away. I have nothing for you. Go away. I have nothing for you, crazy kids. Seems a bit of a waste of time, you know, scanning ships that have just arrived. Ooh, got some nice scans off you, though. Thank you. Alright, let's go down and see what we can see. So, low temperature surface mining. There's the hotspot. Let's deploy hard points and deploy a collector. So, there are my mining lasers. So, that's a good rock. This is entirely random. There is no way to tell one rock from another. So, we're going to launch. Prospector. I'm going to target the prospector and wait. We need to wait for it to hit the asteroid and analyze it. This one has 18% low temperature diamonds, which isn't a bad one to be fair. So, first of all, before we un unlock the cargo scoop, we're going to see what other things are in it. So we need to get nice and close, because mining lasers don't have that massive a range. Shoot the rock, and you'll see a load of things come off it. Now what we want to do is ignore methane catrate, which I've already done. So the only thing I'm going to be picking up is low temperature diamonds. And once they're collected, they get put in the refinery until they've got 100% and that creates one unit of low temperature diamonds. So it means we're going to be here for a while. And I'm pulse firing these because my distributor is a piece of crap. So I have to wait. If you look at my weapons distributor my weapons capacitor rather it needs to refill after each shot this is why we need a new distributor we could just use one mining laser until we've got one the way you do that is you go to modules go to mining laser and switch it off that means we've only got one. It means we can keep going for a bit longer, but it means we've got half the firepower. I mean, honestly, it doesn't really matter at this point because we've only got like two collector limpets. And they're pretty busy as they are. And even then, it will run out of distributor. What we're aiming for is to deplete this asteroid. You can do this at random, but it's really not recommended. Because if you do it at random, you'll get nowhere near the amount that you would with a Prospect Olympic. Like, you will not get 18%. You will get 2%. I'm going to switch that one back on. There we go. Just because it looks nice. So we just need to wait until the pro the collector limpets have collected everything. Usually what I do is nose up so my cargo bay is directly underneath me. 
and the limpets are directly underneath me. It makes their job a little bit easier rather than having to fly around me. And then we just wait. And essentially, that is it. The next thing I'll be doing is finding another rock and doing exactly the same thing over and over again until my cargo rack is full. And you also get elements, which is nice. But for now, I'm going to continue mining. But I'd just like to thank you for watching. Because, you know, no one wants to watch mining. Surely not. Um, so I'm going to finish that episode there. Uh, I hope you've learned something. And uh, hopefully I'll see you on the next one. Bye for now.